Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting video. If you've been following my channel for a little while you will know that I really like mocha. And no, I'm not talking about the drink, although I like that too. I'm talking about the awesome planar tracker from Boris FX that I have used for countless of my visual effects and short film projects over the years. Now a brand new version of Mocha, Mocha Pro 2019 has just been released and I'm really excited to show you some of the cool new features that are now available in both the standalone and the plugin version. First off though, full frontal disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Boris FX. Keep in mind that any sponsored videos I do are always with brands I really respect and for tools I actually like to use so these videos will always end up on the positive side but I will always try to be as objective as I possibly can. Also, if you do intend to purchase Mocha or any of the other products from Boris FX, be sure to use my custom coupon code Surfaced Studio in one word during checkout and you will get 15% off the final price. But now, enough talking, let's check out some of the awesome new features that are available in Mocha Pro 2019. Mocha Pro is available either as a standalone application or in the flavor that I personally prefer as a plugin and in my case it's for Adobe so it works with Premiere Pro and After Effects but you can also get it as plugin for Avid Media Composer, Nuke, Blackmagic Fusion, HitFilm and a bunch of others. So here I have a clip of me skating along Elwood Beach. Let's simply apply the plugin to this layer and let's launch Mocha. If you've used Mocha in the past this will look very different. For one, Mocha Pro 2019 finally supports high DPI and retina displays so it will look nice and crisp even on this 4K and higher resolution screens. All of the icons have been redesigned and there's a whole bunch of new ones to make it easier to get into Mocha and get the most out of it. The other thing you will notice is that this does not look like the usual interface for Mocha and that is because Mocha Pro 2019 introduces something called layouts. When you first launch Mocha you will be dropped in the essentials layout. This layout is clean and simple, you just have the most essential tools available at the top and down on the left hand side and it is really meant mainly for rotoscoping and tracking tasks. It tries to hide away all of that complexity that you usually don't need unless you're a pretty advanced user. Obviously if you are an advanced user you can simply come up to the top here and change back to the classic layout which will give you the classic look of Mocha that you're used to. But for now let's stay in the essentials layout and let's do some quick roto and tracking. I'm just going to do a really dirty and quick job of rotoscoping myself out and tracking the ground on which I skate so we can insert a logo underneath me. And before I hit track I just want to point out that I think newcomers will really appreciate these new icons to explain what type of motions you are tracking on a particular layer. But let's just hit track forward. And obviously I'm just going to speed through this. This isn't meant to be a tutorial. It's really just a feature overview to show you some of the really cool new stuff that is available in Mocha Pro 2019. And once you're done, still within the essentials layout, you can then export your tracking or your shape data. As I already mentioned, if you are a seasoned pro, you can switch back to the classic layout at any point in time. And this is where you will find all of the Mocha advanced features and the modules in the usual place. On top of that, Mocha Pro 2019 also has a layout called Big Picture, which is for previewing your track and your roto with a full view of your clip and without all of the UI distractions. And then there's also a dedicated roto layout. Because rotoscoping is a pretty specialized and very focused workflow, this bare bones layout again provides you with all of the tools that you need to get a great roto and again it just cuts out all of the distractions. Mocha Pro 2019 also comes with a whole bunch of useful new spline tools. For one, there are new primitive tools which, well as the name suggests, are very simple but they're really useful if you just want to create a rectangular or an elliptical shape. Note that once you've drawn the shapes these will just convert to standard X or Bezier splines so you can adjust them and keyframe them in any way that you want. It just helps you get that initial shape quicker. The magnetic spline will automatically try to follow the shape of the object that you're trying to roto and you just have to click to place little guiding markers at the points where the magnetic spline doesn't snap just the way that you want to. And this works really great for some more complicated roto. Again, notice that all of these splines turn into standard X and Bezier splines once you've created them. It's just a tool to help you get that nice clean outline. Now, the one thing I have noticed with the magnetic tool is that undo doesn't seem to work very well. You actually have to restart the curve, but it's not the biggest of deals. It's just one of those things that I've noticed. 
For really quick shapes like garbage mats or whatnot, you can actually just use the freehand spline tool. You can just click and just drag freehand and just create a shape. And again, once you close the loop, that just converts to a standard spline. Interestingly enough, I actually don't find myself using the freehand spline too much and that's simply because the magnetic tool actually has a great feature and if you select it and if you start creating a magnetic spline, if at any point in time you click and hold, you can just draw a freehand spline and the moment you let go, the magnetic spline will return to its default behavior of sticking to the edges of your object. So this kind of gives you both the freehand as well as the magnetic tool in one, but they're great new tools to have in the toolbox. Again, they're just meant to help you create that initial spline. Like the magnetic tool will not try to automatically follow the shape of your objects, like for example, the roto brush tool in After Effects does. Now the roto brush tool works well in some simple situations, but the moment you track humans or anything more complex, it just doesn't work. It flickers, you get really ugly rotos. So personally, I prefer to just come into Mocha, create some shapes and now using the new dedicated roto layout, do my roto in here. I'm usually always happier with the end result. It just looks nicer and cleaner and it's just a more streamlined workflow. Another small but very useful improvement in Mocha 2019 is that there's now additional tools for aligning your surface during tracking, so you can now rotate your surface and you can scale it uniformly. Now let's talk about one of the most popular and most powerful features of Mocha Pro and that is removing objects from a moving shot. As you hopefully know, Mocha Pro has the capability to track a foreground object, then track the background and then either with or without a clean plate, replace that foreground object and essentially erase it from the footage. I've always really enjoyed using this functionality, but now it's even more fun and it's even easier to do because the remove has finally been fully GPU accelerated. Obviously performance will depend a little bit on what graphics card you have in your system, but for me, this is a huge difference to the performance of Mocha Pro 5. It's really quick and fast. Right now this is real time rendering a remove without a clean plate, so Mocha has to do all of the difficult calculations for projection mapping and stripping me from this clip. On top of the faster performance using GPU acceleration, the illumination models have also been improved so they look a lot nicer if you're using a linear or an interpolate illumination model, which essentially blends this remove across the layer so you don't get these harsh edges. So if I let, render this out, let's say with a linear interpolation model, you'll see this smooth out a whole lot more and the final result will just look a whole lot more natural. Before we move on, I obviously know that me saying removes are faster isn't really an objective way to measure performance, so I did an actual side-by-side -side test. For the test, I did a full remove on a 20 second 4K clip. In Mocha Pro 5, that took just over 30 minutes. Using Mocha Pro 2019, on the other hand, that remove was completed in 19 and a half minutes. That's a significant boost in performance of over 30%. Obviously, that performance gain will depend a little bit on your graphics card as well as the length and the size of the file that you're working with, but I'm really excited because I use removes a lot and the GPU acceleration will just make this whole process a whole lot easier. If you're working with 360 video, Mocha VR, which used to be a separate standalone application, has now been rolled up into Mocha Pro 2019, so you have a single application that can deal with both standard as well as mono or stereoscopic 360 footage. In the standalone version of Mocha Pro 2019, you simply import your footage. In the plugin version, within the plugin itself, you can actually change the view based on what type of 360 footage you are working with and then launch Mocha Pro. You then have access to all of the familiar workflows to deal with 360 footage that you used to have in Mocha VR. So you can, for example, this right here is a little bit of a bumpy drone flight. So you can track the mountains in the distance and then reorient the footage to give a much nicer and smoother VR experience. Obviously, all of the other tools for rotoscoping and removing elements from your video will also work with 360 footage and it's nice to now have all of that functionality combined in a single application or in the case of a plugin, in a single plugin. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, just check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.